Oh, one of my favorite things about summer is making memories. Brought my girls out with me, because why not? It's summer, and we thought we'd come out and walk Oceanside Pier. And we're gonna go get some of our favorite donuts at uh, Parlor, and then maybe, what's your favorite thing to do? I encourage you, find some time to be able to reset with friends, with family. Maybe it's going to the lake, maybe it's taking a long walk or going to a ballpark, but it's important to reset. It's important to reset with God too. Whether it's utilizing the daily dose or find some time, dedicated time to go to a quiet place and sit and reflect. Maybe it's journaling, maybe it's listening to a little worship music, do a little Bible reading, but find some time to be able to reset with him. We also have a bunch of different resources this summer in regards to resetting, utilizing our summer classes. I've got a class coming up at the end of this month on how to be able to journey through the process of grief. I realize it might not necessarily be applicable to everyone, but for some of you out there, this is gonna be so important. And then we've got another incredible class coming up in August talking about boundaries in life and in relationship. It's gonna be so key towards developing a great future. To be able to get to those classes, simply text the keyword SUMMER to this phone number right here on the screen, or you can always end up going to our website and finding out all of our classes, whether they're online or somewhere in the San Diego area at one of our campuses. Well, we'd also love to be able to hear your story. What's your story of faith? We want to be able to share that on social media to be able to encourage the rest of our online audience. To be able to do it, it might look a little something like this. My name is Nick Kennedy and I'm watching from Fair Oaks, California. My favorite thing about North Coast Church is the life groups. I always feel connected to those um, in them and it's really nice having people there to support you when times get tough and also to go through the good times together. I would definitely recommend North Coast Online to others. It's a really great way to get connected, plugged in. And you know, uh, like us, we were once in Southern California. We moved up here to Northern California and you know, thank God that we were able to find some community and engagement here through North Coast. So um, definitely recommend it. We would love to be able to capture your story. To be able to do it, simply text the keyword share to this phone number right here on the screen and we're utilizing a particular app that's going to lead you into questions and record it right then and there. So I encourage you, encourage the rest of our online community by sharing your story. Now let's go ahead and get ready for today's message. Download our message notes on our website or utilize our mobile app. There you can also put out a connection card, put in your prayer request or you can also give online. Now let's go ahead and go into worship and then hear from Pastor Damien Easter. Jesus crucified in me. I know nothing but how you saved my soul. In my weakness, this has been my confidence. Oh, your great love for me. Oh, your grace for Ah 
What is going on, North Coast Online family? Yep, it's me. It is me, the one that is a little bit louder than the rest, and it's just because I am passionate, I am excited about the word of the Lord, about Jesus, and all that he has for us today. So I will advise you now, Adjust your volumes accordingly. Amen? Yes, turn it up, maybe. <laughs> or turn it down just a tad bit. Anyway, it goes. God's got something special for us today. I'm excited to bring you the word. For those of you that maybe this is your first time experiencing me or seeing me in any way, shape, or form, my name's Damien. I get the privilege of serving as the young adults pastor, the Jordan young adults pastor here on our Vista campus on Thursday nights. On Thursday nights, we turn up the campus and we party 18 to 25. If that's you, I want to invite you to come through. Hallelujah. So that's me. And now we are about to get ready to get into the word, but here's what I need you to do. I feel like we are beginning to build a relationship. Amen. Amen. We are beginning to build a relationship. I'm getting to know you more. You're getting to know me more. And if ever you find yourself here on campus in the edge, I am also the edge venue pastor in the edge. We do something called Safe Space, okay, Safe Space. I just want to introduce that to my online family. So all you do is this. It's, we just create Safe Space, and this is what you do. You just go like this, Safe Space, okay, right? Yeah, okay, Safe Space. Okay, now I'm going I'm to invite you to do it with me on three. You may be with your, your small group. You may be with your church and community. I want you to do it together on three, okay? All right? I can't, I can't know if you're not going to do it, but let's just do it. I trust you. You trust me. Safe Space on three. One, two, three. Safe Space. All right. So we've created a safe space. 
Now, as we get ready to dive into our scriptures, which we are having a triumphal entry, a Palm Sunday in the summer. Come on, somebody. It's a Palm Sunday in the summer. Here's how we're going to start. We're going to get into the scripture simply by a round of applause. Yes, a round of applause. Yes, just put your hands together wherever you are. Even look at the person next to you. Mm -hmm. Look at them and just give them a round of applause. There's, it's just such a blessing that comes when you just are giving somebody a round of applause. Give them a round of applause. They are worthy. They are in the image of God created, fearfully, wonderfully made. Give them some praise. A round of applause is how we get into the story today. A round of applause, a community of people that are in Jerusalem. Everybody has descended upon Jerusalem for the festival. Those that have just seen Jesus raise Lazarus from the dead, all of them are, have ascended upon Jerusalem for such a time as this. And applause is ringing out everywhere. The crowd is going wild as Jesus is entering in. It's his triumphal entry. The jackets are coming off. The palm branches are being laid down. It is the time for us to crown the king that we have been waiting for all of our lives. You are familiar with the story. It's John chapter 12, verses 12 through 19. And as we get ready to dive into this, I feel like it's a must that I remind you what John wrote about and why. John does not spare any of his words when he tells us the purpose of his book. The purpose of his book is simply this, that you and I would believe that Jesus is the Messiah, that Jesus is the Son of God. Everything that he writes and shows us is to point to who Jesus truly is. And if you've been journeying with us through this series, what you will realize and see is that as we read the book of John, we are faced with who we really are in comparison with who Jesus really is. And when we look at it, we realize that there are some very important needs that you and I come with that Jesus is the source of meeting all of those needs. Okay, all right, let's go. John 12, 12 through 19, triumphal entry. My title says, Jesus comes to Jerusalem as king. It says this, the next day, the crowd that had come for, for the festival heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the king of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it. As it is written, do not be afraid, daughter Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. At first, his disciples did not understand all this. After all, only after Jesus was glorified did they realize that these things had been written about him and that these things had been done to him. Verse 17, now the crowd that was with him when he called Lazarus from the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to spread the word. Many people, because they had heard that he had performed this sign, went out to meet him. So the Pharisees said to one another, see, this is getting us nowhere. Look how the whole world has gone after him. Look how the whole world has gone after him. At the triumphal entry, we are looking at a population in Jerusalem that has probably ballooned to more than 2 million people, all of them looking to crown a king. And just for the next few moments, I want to talk to you from the subject of the hero we want versus the hero we need. The hero we want versus the hero we need. Now, I know it's been a lot of group participation for us being an online family. I know you might just be listening to this in your car. This is a great opportunity for you to participate too, because you couldn't do the safe space thing. So now here, this is for you. I just want you to say, I need a hero. Mm -hmm. Just say it out loud. I need a hero. 
Mm, I need a hero. You and I, we need a hero. I'm holding out for a hero to the end of the night. See, that's the, sh- the Shrek anointing coming upon me. That's what some, some of y'all, it's a little bit older of a song, but for me, that's Shrek. He's got to be strong and he's got to be fast and he's got to be fresh from the fight. I need a hero. Then you get your little feet going here. I'm holding out for a hero to the morning light. He's got to be sure and it's got to be soon and he's got to be larger than life, larger than life. I need a hero. I need a hero. You need a hero. We need a hero. And that's evident in the scriptures right here because everyone in the crowd is yelling, Hosanna, 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 which simply means save us now. Save us now. Save us now. So let me give you these next three blanks. These next three blanks are very easy to fill in But if you're anything like me, these next three blanks are very hard to ask for. And it's very hard to say because what they're saying when they're saying, Hosanna, save us now. I think we can recognize that in us, there's this part of us that needs a savior. This this part of us that needs a hero. This part of us that needs this next blank is we need help. We need help, help, help. Those next three blanks right there. Help, help, help. This is what is being screamed out. Hosanna, Hosanna, save us now. Help us, help us, help us. We need a hero. We need help. But here's what's interesting. The help we need doesn't always look like the help we want. I just want to say that one more time. The help that we need doesn't always look like the help that we want. Um, my kids will come and help me. They're, they're older now and they'll, they'll help me, okay? They will help me. Like if we're cleaning up the house, my kids will come and they'll be like, hey dad, is there something I can do to help? Is there something I can do to help? Music to my ears, y'all. That is music to my ears. My kid wants to help me clean up their mess. Oh my goodness, thank you so much. And so I tell them how I need help. This is the help that I need, son. I need you to do this, 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 and this. I need you to do your laundry. I need you to get this done. I need you to clean these dishes, put these dishes away just like this. This is what I need you to do. This is the help that I need. And then they look around. Can I move the couch? I'm like, that's not the help that I need, son. But that's the help that he wants to give. Something that does not help the situation at all. So often the help that we want doesn't look like the help that we need. I need you to do the dishes right here. And he's like, but what I want to do is I want to move the couch. Son, the couch doesn't need to be moved. You see, so often the help that we want, it doesn't look like the help that we need. And that's the idea here with the hero of Jesus coming into Jerusalem and coming in to save the day. He doesn't look exactly like the hero that everyone was anticipating. Can I give you an idea of the hero that we actually want? The hero that we actually want, I like to call the Miro. The Miro, M-E-R-O. The hero that we actually want is the Miro. What does that mean? It's all about me. It's all about me. It's the Miro. I want to be the hero in my story. I want to be the author and the finisher of my faith. I want, my story should center around me. These next three blanks are my story. So it should be my will, my way, my time. That's the hero that we want. We want my will. We want our own way. We want our own time. God, can you do this for me? Like, like I want it done this way, but I don't want it done. I, I want it done the way I want it done, not the way that you are going to do it. And without us even saying it, we're saying most of the time, you know what, Lord, take a break. I got this. No, I know, I know you created me. I am created in your image. I get it, but you're not moving fast enough. Or I've been suffering through this for far too long. I need to take the matters into my own hands and figure this out. And can I tell you, family, you and I, we're not alone in those desires. 
We're not alone in the desires to take control of our lives and, and, and take the wheel and say, God, you, take, you, you continue to take the night off. I got this. We're not alone. The Bible, that's why I love the word of God, family. Because the Bible is littered with examples of imperfect people taking, trying to be the Miro in their own stories, trying to take center stage and say, I got this, I can do it, my will, my way, my time. And time and time again, what do we see? We see a gracious God a God who is filled with love, a God who is filled with compassion. We see this guy, this God come in hot pursuit of you and I as we fight for our will, our way, our time. And this is what's going on during this triumphal triumphal entry. See, the people, the crowd, they want Jesus to be the conquering king, the king that's going to come in and set them free from Roman oppression, the king that's going to come in and break the chains that they are bound in and set forth his kingdom. This is the king that they were looking forward to. But I love it because the king that we need is not limited by the sight that he sees right now. You and I, we're limited by what we can see. But the king of kings and the Lord of lords, he comes in and he sees it's not just Roman oppression that you need to be set free from. It's sin death, hell, and the grave that you and I need to be set free from. This is our king. Amen. Come on. Safe space. Hallelujah. Let's go. Like this is our God. This is the hero. This is the hero. He is a conquering king. He conquered sin so that you and I can be free. This is a conquering king. He conquers death so that we don't have to fear its sting, so that we can know and have a hope on this side of eternity that when that time comes, that is not it. Siri, you trying to get saved too. Hallelujah. That is not it. That's not it, family. That's our king. He is the conquering king, but we have to be willing to set aside the hero that we want for the hero that we need, because if I'm honest, Jesus sometimes doesn't look like the hero that I need because this hero came clothed in humility and armed with peace. See this hero, he came clothed in humility and armed with peace simply by how he enters into the city. You see, a conquering king that has the spoils of war. We've just got done defeating our enemy. Now is our time. Let's go. A conquering king is coming in and he has the spoils of war. He is on his high horse above everybody. Everybody comes in. Hello, I've conquered. Yes, I'm back from the war. Here's a rabbit. Here's a donk. I don't, I don't know what the spoils of war are. I know they're not throwing out whole donkeys because that just seems impossible. But the spoils of war, right? They're throwing out the spoils spoils of war and they're above everybody. And then here comes the king that we need. The king that we need comes on a donkey. The king that we need comes and, and, and just the, the, the donkey or the colt um, represents this idea of peace. See, he comes clothed in humility, but armed with peace. John 14, 26, when we get to that, Jesus, he tells his people, he says, he says to his disciples, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. See, there's a peace that only Jesus can give. There's a peace and the peace that he gives goes beyond all of our understanding. You see, he comes clothed in humility, armed with peace. This is the hero we need. This is the hero we need. The hero that we need, this hero, this Jesus, this Jesus is omnipotent. This this hero is omnipotent. That's a fancy word to say he's all powerful. I got to use the theology degree somewhere, amen? Yes, I do. 
omnipotent, omnipotent, all powerful. He is able to do more than you can ask, think, or imagine. Ephesians 3, 20 through 21 says, now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever, amen. This hero is omnipotent. He's all powerful. This hero is omniscient. He's all all knowing. John 2, 24, you remember this? It says, but Jesus would not entrust him to him, would not entrust himself to them for he knew all people. He did not need any testimony about mankind for he knew what was in each person. Our God is all knowing. Our hero is all knowing. Oh, what does that mean? It means he knows what's best for you and I than we do. Oh, he knows. I know it feels like he doesn't know. I know it feels like I know. I know it feels like social media knows what's best. I know sometimes it feels like my Enneagram situation knows what's best. But my goodness, family, isn't there so much peace and solace that you and I can have knowing that our hero is all powerful, knowing that our our hero is all knowing. He knows us inside and out. He knows you better than he knows knows himself, our e- then you know yourself. Our hero is omnipresent. Another fancy word, just simply saying present everywhere at all times. So he's all powerful. He's all knowing. He's present everywhere at all times. Psalm 46, one through three, it says, God is our refuge and strength and ever present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and mountains quake with their surging. What does that speak to? That speaks to the world that we live in today. The world that we live in today in all of its beauty. And you know, we are in San Diego. We know how to appreciate a sunset. Come on, somebody. Am I? Come on. You go into into the beach later, you're going to take a sunset pic. We know how to appreciate the beauty of the world that God has made. But family, you take a snapshot of that beauty and understand that that beautiful snapshot is still not as beautiful as the way God originally created the world. The world we live in is fallen. The world we live in is, is, is but a glimpse of that which was originally created. And that psalm is saying that there are going to be hard times. That psalm is saying that there's going to be trouble. There's going to be frustrations. But look, our God is a very present help. He is all powerful. He is all knowing. He is present everywhere at all times. Oh, do you see it? Do you see it? The the hero we want versus the hero we need. The hero we want is my will, my way, my time. But 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 when that's our hero, when we are our heroes, or our friends or our family are our heroes, oh, we are grossly limiting what a hero looks like. We are grossly limiting what a hero can actually do because the hero we need is all powerful. The hero we need is all knowing. The hero we need is everywhere all at once at all times. But my question family is this, what happens when the hero we want doesn't match the hero we need? What happens when the hero we want doesn't match the hero we need? You learn your lean. Mm -hmm. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. That's your next blank if you missed it. You learn your lean. You learn your lean. This is where we learn our lean. And, and, And what might your lean be? Your lean is what you depend on besides God. It's what you depend on besides God. And, and here's, here's what's awesome. You and I, um, we, we, we tend to, to lean on our own understanding, right? We lean on our own understanding. And here's what's awesome about leaning on our own understanding. God knew we would have a tendency to lean on our own understanding. 
I love the Lord because he knows us. He's all knowing, remember? He's all knowing. He knows we will have a tendency to lean on that which we can see. And so often that which we can see will become bigger than the God who sees everything. He knew that, he knows that. So he gave us Proverbs 3, 5 through 7 that says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. You know where I'm going. Lean not on your own understanding. So the good news about leaning on our own understanding is God knew we would do it. The bad news about leaning on our own understanding is our understanding wasn't created to uphold us. And he says, lean not on your own understanding, but depend on me or or trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do and he will show you which path to take. Verse seven, I love this. It says, don't be impressed with your own wisdom. Don't be impressed with your own wisdom. Now here's what I know. Here is what I know. I know there are a lot of wise people watching this right now. Mm Mm-hmm. That's my online community. Some of y'all are out on the beach right now. You got your hat on, or you might be out on the water with Chris just fishing, and you got, but you got the Lord, and you got the sea, and you got the fish, right? You, you, you are very smart. Your wisdom is wise beyond its years. Some of you all have spent tons of money on a great education, or you were like, you know what? I'm a self-made person. I got this. I don't need the education. I got this. I love the Lord because he says, you do have wisdom. Oh, you are wise. Oh, yes, you are. You have been through some things, and those things have caused you to make some very wise decisions, but he says, don't be impressed with it. Don't be impressed with your own wisdom. You see, trusting in the Lord in that Hebrew, it says to lie down, to put your entire weight on something. And, and, and can I show you this? I want to show you. I want to invite one of my guys here at North Coast, Jojo. Come on up, Jojo. Now, Jojo, now jo- Jojo's in the house, y'all. Look at the, the handsome man of God. Now, o- online family, all of the worship videos you get to experience and you get to like get your hallelujah and your ugly cry on. That's Jojo. Jojo puts it all together. So, so Jojo, I just want to celebrate you. Come on. Hallelujah. Now, here's what Jojo is going to represent for us right now. Because I want to show you what it looks like to lean on God, to, 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 to learn your lean. So right now, we're going through the process where, where, where all this doesn't match up. The hero I want doesn't match up with the hero I need. Um, So what is my lean? You learn your lean. Am I leaning on my own understanding? Do I lean on my education? Do I lean on my skill and ability? And some of us, we've gotten used to that, but but I just want to show you what it means to trust in God, to lean on God. So Jojo, your responsibility is just catch me, okay? Okay, so I'm talking to the online family, and I'm just going to fall back. We're like, okay, whoo hallelujah, right? So that's what it looks like to lead, and, 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 and you kind of, the first, whoo you see how the first lean, I was a little hesitant. I was like, mm, I don't, I cannot, can I trust the, can I trust, can I trust them? Can I trust them? Can I trust him? And then you start to build that muscle of trust when we lean on the Lord, especially in hard situations. And now I could just walk around. I could go all the way over here. And I don't know. I can't, I can't even really see Jojo right now. But I'm going to just trust that. You see? And I, now I'm going to go over here and be like, hey, how you doing? Good day. All right. Hallelujah. I can't see him anymore. And I'm going to just, whoo, you know? Like this is what it means to lean on the Lord. This is what it means to trust. This is what it means. And the more we do it, the easier it gets. And you just are like, oh my goodness, what? I can go to sleep and trust? I can just breathe? What about that diagnosis? What do I do? Oh, the Lord. And this, this is what it means to trust the Lord. Oh, it's to put all of our weight on God, the hero that we need. It's, it's, it's to, and, and for some of us, for this might be your season where you, where you, God, nope, not yet. I, I, I didn't give them, the, this might be your season where you jump in the arms of the Lord, where now it's time to just, ah, we did it. It might be your time to just jump into the arms of the Lord. 
Oh, it's fun. It's fun to kind of bring that visual to life and so we can kind of see what it looks like and, and what it means to trust the Lord. And the reality is, is that it's hard, right? It's challenging to do that on a consistent basis, but I just want to encourage you, family, that like JoJo is here and all he, he's just, he's got me. He's got me. He's got me. So if I just fall at any time, I now trust that this man has my back. And I just want to encourage somebody that you can fall into the arms of the Lord, that the hero we need knows exactly what you need, and he has provided it for you. The hero that we need sees you, he knows you, he loves you, and he's there for you. And I just, I just want to encourage you in that the hero that we need is available right now. Can we give it up for JoJo? I, man, I love you, man. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Oh, man. That's a good man right there. I was nervous. I'm going to keep it real. You see, you can be nervous and trust in the Lord. Amen. You can be nervous and trust in the Lord. My, my encouragement to you, family, is our, um, our understanding is not meant to uphold us. Our answers and your desire for answers and the reason, the reason why. And, and I understand the whys, but, 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 but it's the who. The answer to the why isn't what will uphold us. It's getting to know the who while the why is being worked out. Hey is getting to know the who while the why is being worked out. And the who is the, is the hero that you need. The who is Jesus. The who is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And the last blank I want to give you here is for us to receive his peace, we have to clothe ourselves with humility to receive his peace. We have to clothe ourselves in humility to receive his peace. You see, the crowd of millions, they're coming and they want Jesus their way. It's like the drive through have it your way. They want Jesus their way. But Jesus came to be the way, not a way. He came to be the way the way for you and I to be set free from the bondage of sin, the way for you and I to have a relationship with the creator of the universe, the way. He is our Lord. He is our Savior. But you and I, we have to do something that's hard in order to receive that. We have to humble ourselves. And, and humbling doesn't necessarily look like, oh, I, I just forgive me and I'm, I, I humble myself before you like groveling in a pit. Uh, humbling might just simply look like saying this, I need help. That's humility. It takes humility to say, I need help. And then when you say, I need help, I want you to identify those people in your life that will not just help you with good wisdom. You need some good wisdom. You need some good sound advice and, and all of that. But, but, but who are the people that will encourage you in the Lord when you can't encourage yourself? One of those people for me is, and you all may know him, my man, Andrew Pulfer. This man is a gift to my life, y'all. He is our worship pastor in the edge. He's our worship pastor in the Jordan. And here's what's bananas. I don't even know that he knows how often the Lord uses him to encourage me just to be me and let God use me the way God wants to use me. I need help. I need help. And it's not, I'm not just saying look to Jesus. I'm saying look to some of the people in your life that can keep you focused on the Lord. 
that can encourage you in your most holy faith, that can encourage you in the hero that you need. So talk to someone that will remind you that your help comes from the heels and Jesus is in the heels. Look up, stop looking down, look up. And maybe before you see Christ, maybe you'll see a friend that'll be able to point your eyes in the direction of where Christ might be found. Oh, we have to humble ourselves, clothe ourselves in humility to receive his peace. What does that mean? It means admitting we don't know it all. Mm-hmm. I know that's a cha- that is a challenge for you, sir. That is a challenge for you, ma'am. Safe space. It's a challenge for me. Oh, because I like, I like the way people look at me when it seems like I know what I'm doing. I do. It's intoxicating. I like the feeling of, and even, let's put people to the side, even the, just how it feels to, the, the confidence that knowing things brings, right? Like, I, I, I love the scriptures, and I'm learning so much more about it, and I, as I was getting my degree in theology, I, I found myself getting more and more confident in my understanding of the scriptures and my ability to, to clearly communicate God's word to people. I found myself getting, getting more confident, but in all of that, I have to sit here and say, I don't know. I don't know it all. I don't know it all. I don't, I don't know why I, I grew up in a broken home. I don't know. I don't know why what happened to you happened to you. Can I be honest? Safe space. I don't know why some of the things that happened to me as a kid happened to me. I don't know why. I don't know it all. So what does that mean? I want to encourage you to abandon outcomes to God. Abandon outcomes, abandon temporary outcomes to God. What does that mean? Instead of holding the situation and the circumstance like this in a death grip, saying it has to happen this way. My healing has to come like this. My, 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 my freedom has to come like this. And it has to look a certain way. Instead of that, what if we, what if we just said, I'm just going to loosen the grip a little bit. And I'm going to be open-handed. And I'm going to let the Lord have what he wants to have, meaning take out what you want to take out. And here's what so often he wants to take out, the Miro. He wants to take out the me. And we see it in scripture. We see it in John the Baptist. When Jesus comes on the scene, John the Baptist is like, all, all of John's disciples are like, hey, yo, 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 this Jesus dude, he's coming. I just need you to protect our turf, John, Okay. This is JB's territory. I'm going to need you to protect our turf. And what does John say to them? He says, no, 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 no. I must decrease so that he can increase. Oh, I just, I love that because it's such a hard thing to say. It's such a hard thing to pray, but it's the thing that I need. So I want to encourage you, whatever the outcome is that you've been holding on to, maybe it's to see a grandson or a granddaughter come to the Lord. Maybe it's to see that job come through the way you've been desiring it to come through. Maybe it's to see that thing broken, that thing that has been broken, restored. And I want to encourage you, family, bring all of that to the Lord, but then fall back into the fact that he is all-knowing. Fall back into the fact that he is with you when you feel like the circumstances are just too much. He is there. Fall back into the fact that he is in fact all powerful. And then the last thing, what does clothing ourselves in humility to receive his peace, what might it look like, this confession? Now I've had you confess many things. I, 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 I need a hero. The last thing I would love for you to say, I am his, I am his. You're his. You're his. You're his. You're his. You're his. You're his. To every single person hearing this, seeing this, wherever you find yourself, you are his. 
however you are wired, whatever deficiency, whatever diagnosis that has been spoken over you or has been discovered about you, you are still his. You are his, you are his, you are his. It doesn't matter what other people think. It doesn't matter what other people say. The king that has come on a donkey to bring peace, to establish his kingdom, you are his. Hallelujah. That gets me excited. That blesses me. That blesses me so much to know that no matter where I am, no matter where I find myself, no matter who has walked out on me, no matter who has broken their word or a promise or has maybe disliked me or has maybe said, that brother is way too loud. Somebody think about letting him, he is loud, 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 loud. I warned you already, turn down the volume or some of you, you might need to turn it up. Mm -mm 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 -mm. But it doesn't matter because right where I am, just how I am, just how he has wired me, I am. I am his, and so are you. You see, everybody wanted a conquering king. Maybe, maybe the king came to conquer the insecurities that we have. Maybe the king came the way he came to conquer the fears that we innately walk in. So because you are his and our hero is all powerful, all knowing and everywhere at all times, you can bring all that you are to his feet and let him do in you and through you what only he can do. I leave you with this last thing, the hero we need may be different than what you thought. The hero we need may be different than what you want at times. But this hero is better. This hero is better. Let me pray for us. Lord, thank you. Thank you for being so good that you are able to Give us what we need instead of what we want. What I also know too, Lord, is that there's so many people that they have needs and they also have wants. And I thank you that there's nothing wrong with the wants that we have and the needs that we have that we can come and bring all of those things to you. My prayer, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, for everyone watching this right now, my prayer is that they would Abandon any lean that is bigger than their lean on you. My prayer is that they would trust in you as their hero. That they would know that because you are all powerful, there is nothing that you cannot do so we can trust you. That because you are all knowing that we can trust that you know what's best. And because you are all everywhere at all times, that we can trust you that even in our darkest, loneliest moments, you are there with us. You are in fact a very present help in the time of trouble. So thank you, Jesus, that you are better. You are a better way and we receive all that you are and we thank you for it now in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. God bless you family. Have a blessed week. Hey, thank you so much for joining us this week online. Hopefully you got encouraged by this week's message and hopefully you get out some time this summer and make some memories. So whether you're on vacation or you're located across the country, Thank you so much for joining us this week. Take care. <laughs>